Okay, once upon a time, there was a room full of cats. The problem is, they didn't actually know they were cats. One day, one of the cats said, I really wish I was a cat. I want to be a cat more than anything in the world. Well, some of the others heard this and they said, we want to be cats too, how can we be a cat? I know, milk. If we drink milk, we will be cats. Well, the milk didn't work. One of them said, I know, let's go out, prowl in the streets at night, get high on catnip and start cat fights. <laughs> Gotta be worth a try. One of the cats, this cat, got a little bit fed up of trying to figure out how to be a cat. So he thought, I'm gonna go off out into the world <coughs> and try and find the answers. Now this cat went on an amazing adventure. He met so many other animals from all around the world, learned about them, where they're from. He even met some other cats, but the penny still hadn't dropped. Anyway, one day the cat found himself next to a beautiful, oh, still lake. <laughs> Feeling a bit thirsty, he decided to go down and have a drink. As he got to the water's edge, he leaned over and saw his reflection. Holy crap, I'm a cat. I can't wait to go home and tell the others what I know. So the cat gets home, tells them all about his adventure and drops a big bombshell. Guys, you're cats. I think travelling might have made him a bit crazy. The travelling cat realised that he couldn't just tell the others what he knew. He needed them to go on an adventure for themselves. In 2015, I experienced what I feel is a pivotal moment in my life. I had my heart broken. I was in a friendship group that I was fighting, or I felt that I was fighting too hard to be in. I was in a lot of debt. And then to top it off, I had a miscarriage. And I dealt with it by not dealing with it at all. You see, Somebody back in the past has come up with this really ridiculous saying, and that is, don't worry, there's always somebody worse off than yourself. Of course, we're all completely different. We're so unique. Therefore, our capacity for emotional pain is different too. So something that I might experience that is traumatic and painful, somebody else may not have the same experience to it and vice versa. So I did myself a huge injustice by not acknowledging my pain and my loss. And of course, when you push pain inwards, it has nowhere to go. I'm behind on the slide. It has nowhere to go. So by mid-2016, I was in a really bad way. And I remember sitting, thinking, I don't know what the point of living is because it hurts all the time. In front of other people, I'd be like, really bubbly, fun, Chloe, but I'd go home and I'd just I just didn't understand. And I remember all I wanted to know was how to be happy. Simple question, right? So I did what a lot of us probably do when we want to know the answer to something. Took out my phone, www.google.com. Absolutely love Google. And I just typed into the empty search bar, how to be happy. Now, so much stuff come up, as you can imagine, but one thing that come up that kind of resonated a little bit with me was an eight-week happiness course. I thought, it's a bit weird. <laughs> Got nothing to lose at this point. I'm going to try it. Not going to tell anyone that that's what I'm doing, but that's what I'm going to do. Now, this course didn't make me happy as such, but what it did do was it introduced me to meditation and it introduced me to a new way of thinking about my loss. And of course, uh, from there, the idea to travel was born. So, by October 2016, I was boarding a plane by myself to go to Panama. Why <laughs> Panama? I saw it on season three of Prison Break, and I thought, <coughs> that looks pretty cool. <laughs> Not the prison part, obviously, because that would be weird. <laughs> so the plan was to spend six months in Panama and finish writing a book that I'd started a few years before but never got around to finishing. And beyond that, I had no idea 
what was going to happen. So I got to Panama. Something amazing happens when you just let go of what an outcome could be. I ended up ditching my suitcase and multiple pairs of shoes, women's prerogative, and I got myself a backpack. And I ended up going to Panama, Nicaragua, Honduras, Guatemala, Belize, Mexico, and Colombia by myself. And I had an amazing time. I learned how to surf. I learned how to scuba dive. Now, this was quite a traumatic experience for me. Um, I actually cried in my mask, believe it or not, <laughs> doing my skill test. And there was a lady who was, I didn't know her, but she was learning in it as well. And she kind of swam over at the bottom of the ocean and put her arm around me to comfort me while I was crying. And I thought I saw a shark in the corner of my mask. And I just remember keep thinking to myself, I just want my mum, which is ridiculous because my mum could never take on a shark. <laughs> but, but do you know what? 20 minutes later, I was cruising along with a hawksbill turtle having the best time. And my appreciation for this planet just literally exploded because there is an entire world under there that I had not experienced before and I was, I was living it. I climbed a volcano and then boarded down it. Thank goodness for travel insurance, right? It's a thing, everyone does it. Um, this was a really tough hike for me. Um, but I had these three Australian guys. Again, they didn't know me. They literally championed me up that volcano. They wouldn't overtake me. They were like, come on, Chloe, you've got this. You can do this. And I was like, I can't do it. I smell so bad. It's not happening. Um, but they did. They, 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 even one of them even carried my bag for me up there because that's how supportive other people really are of each other. And then I boarded down it. I released baby sea turtles into the ocean. I swam with wild dolphins. Uh, I think one of them touched my leg, it was weird. Um, <laughs> I swam with a whale shark. It literally swam underneath me, it was incredible. I visited beaches, sunsets, beach parties. I saw amazing places, made life-changing friendships. But, Travel has its highs and it also has its lows. And through those lows, those challenges, there's quite a few things that I learned. I am a huge dog lover. Probably shouldn't say it in front of the cat, but I am. I've got a healthy obsession with dogs. Now, when I was traveling, I saw a lot of street dogs, which was really heartbreaking. But I always tried to feed them and give them cuddles and, you know, uh, do, do whatever I could to, to try and help the ones that I saw. But here's the thing, I was always able to walk around at night because I always had a pack of dogs with me. <laughs> and let's face it, no one's going to mess with a crazy dog lady, right? <laughs> Even if she's covered in flea bites, it's fine. And this is the thing about kindness, it always, always comes back round to you. Ah, communication. Now, I couldn't communicate as freely as I could back home. Um, I had to learn some Spanish and hope that the people that I was talking to could understand what I was saying. But something that I did notice is there is a form of communication that everybody, everywhere around the entire world understands. And that is a smile. You can say so much with a smile. I went from living in my own two-bed flat with an abundance of privacy to sharing a dorm and a bathroom with 10 plus people moving every single day and I realised how attached to stuff I'd got. It's nice to have things, of course it is, but I started to realise that all I had was what was in my backpack that you saw and I was having an incredible time. I was starting to understand that happiness wasn't necessarily what I thought it was. Time. Now, prior to travel, I was restricted heavily by time, not just for work, but also I was fast approaching 30. And I was getting to that age where people are like, innocently, oh, Chloe, when are you going to get a husband? When are you going to have a baby? They didn't realise this, 
But every time somebody would ask me that question, my heart would literally sink. And I was being expected to answer a question that I didn't even understand in my own head. But when I went travelling, no one asked me how old I was. No one said, why haven't you got a husband or why haven't you had children yet? They didn't care, it was irrelevant. Chloe, do you want to get tacos? Yes, I do, thank you. That is the question I know how to answer. <laughs> Contentment. One thing as well that I noticed, and it really baffled me, was how people who had so little in terms of material objects were so happy and content. I was seeing that the thing that those people held dearly was actually their community and taking care of one another. And my constant need for something more was actually taken away from the attention from everything that I already had in my life that was great. Travel took me on an incredible journey from a really low and lonely place to the place, this spot right here where I'm standing in front of you with an idea that we feel is worth sharing. And that is that this world has everything you need to have an amazing life. Now, I'm not alone in the way that I think. I have a podcast called If a Hostel Could Talk, where I talk to travellers from all around the world. And although our fun stuff is different, our underlining experience is the same. So if you feel like you're hurting, that you've failed, you are staring at a blank Google search box, or perhaps you want to be more cat, then I just want you to know that the answers you are looking for are out there. But most importantly, go out and have fun whilst you're trying to figure it out. Thank you very much. <laughs>